Did you know that many countries or nations have a very ancient origin that is recorded in the Bible? An example of this is ancient Persia, which is now known as Iran, and which has a rich biblical heritage. Characters such as Daniel, Queen Esther, Ezra, and Nehemiah are related to this culture. Greetings, dear listener. On this occasion, we will immerse ourselves in the history and geography of Iran, investigating from its beginnings to its most notable moments from a biblical, archaeological, and cultural perspective. We will discover curiosities and mysteries about this country, as well as its complicated relationship with Israel. This video promises to be fascinating, offering you interesting information that you won't want to miss. Before you continue, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to activate the notification bell so that YouTube notifies you every time we upload a new video. Let's start. For many years, the Middle East has captured global attention. Not only is it recognized as the cradle of civilization, and the place of origin of the Bible and its prophets. But it is also the epicenter of biblical prophecy due to the divine plan that unfolds in that region, especially in Jerusalem. Although there are prophecies related to other places on earth, however, the Middle East remains the focal point due to its importance in God's plan. The Middle East continues to be a focus of conflict both regionally and globally. What is the reason why the three main monotheistic religions continue to fight for this land? Despite the most notable efforts to achieve peace, why have they failed? What will be the path to peace in the Middle East and in the world in general? To understand it, it is necessary to go back to its primitive roots. They contain the foundations to understand the problems that the Bible addresses, offering us information not only about the past, but also about the future of the Middle East. Now, in the Middle East, there are the following countries. In the Arab Peninsula, there are Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Yemen. Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia are located in the Caucasus. There is also the Islamic Republic of Iran. In the Near East, there are Iraq, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, the Syrian Arab Republic, and Turkey. Under that context, Let's delve into the history of the Islamic Republic of Iran, state in Southwest Asia, heir to the ancient Persian civilization, whose name changed to Iran in 1935. Its shape is that of a very irregular quadrilateral, which limits to the north with the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics through Armenia, Azerbaijan, the south of the Caspian Sea, and Turkmenistan. The western border is given by Turkiya, Iraq, and the Persian Gulf, to the south is the Sea of Oman. To the east, Pakistan and Afghanistan, countries that participate in the geographical characteristics of the Iranian space. Now, Iran has its roots in the biblical story of Genesis. After the flood, only Noah's family managed to survive. Made up of his three sons, his three daughters-in-law and his wife, making a total of eight people along with Noah. It is from Noah's children that the earth was going to be populated again. Let's read Genesis chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. These are the generations of Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, to whom sons were born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. Madai, the third son of Japheth, whose name means Middle Land, is the ancestor of the Medes, now the Persians are often linked to the Medes in the Bible and in history. Persia proper was inhabited by the Persians, an Aryan people of the Medes family. In the year 700 before Christ, Achaemenes the Great, great-grandfather of Cyrus the Great, belonging to the Pasigata tribe, he became clan chief of the Federation of Persian Tribes. That is why the period from Achaemenes to Alexander the Great is called the Achaemenid period. This small kingdom was the seed of the Persian Empire. When they are first mentioned in Assyrian inscriptions, they emigrated from the east of the Caspian Sea and were led to Persia by Achaemenes. The Persian kingdom became tributary to the Medes as by him, year 630 before Christ. When Cyrus II came to his father's throne in the year 559, 
Before Christ, the kingdom was part of a larger Median kingdom. The Medes controlled the territory to the northeast and east of the Babylonians. In the year 550 before Christ Cyrus, he rebelled against Astyages, the Median king. His rebellion led to the king's capture and gave Cyrus control of a kingdom stretching from Media to the river Halys in Asia Minor. This victory did not mean the annihilation of the Medes. As Cyrus himself demonstrated by forgiving Astyages, the rise to power of the Achaemenids would serve to strengthen the union of both peoples. This policy of integration of Persia and Media became one of the main references of the reign of Cyrus the Great, along with its religious tolerance. Now, shortly after Cyrus challenged the king of Lydia, the victory there granted him the western portion of Asia Minor. According to Herodotus and Xenophon, Cyrus was born to a Persian father and a Median mother and managed to unite the Persians under his leadership. In this way, the Median Empire came under the control of the Persians, whose borders extended throughout the Iranian plateau, reaching west through Assyria and Armenia to the Halys River in Asia Minor. From that place, the noble families exercised government over the Persians and the Medes during the dynasty of the Achaemenid kings. Although the Medes remained subordinate to the Persians during the Achaemenid dynasty, it is undeniable that the empire became an entity of dual nature, becoming a powerful empire. In chapter 8, verse 3, Daniel prophesied the following, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a ram stood before the river, and it had two horns, and although the horns were high, one was higher than the other, and the tallest one grew later. The two-horned ram symbolizes Media and Persia, both powerful, but the taller one grew later. Although Persia was the youngest kingdom, under the leadership of Cyrus, it became the dominant part. Now, his most important victory was in the year 539 before Christ, when, leading a combined force of Medes, Persians, and Elamites, Cyrus took mighty Babylon, in fulfillment of biblical prophecies, Daniel and Isaiah. Let's read the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 21, verse 2. A hard vision has been shown to me. The prevaricator prevaricates, and the destroyer destroys. Come up, O Elam, lay siege, O Media. I made all his moaning cease. Before the prophet appears a harsh and terrible vision of a plundering, treacherous, violent, and destructive power. This power was Babylon. The prevaricator Elam and Media are asked to rise against her to end the anguish and misfortune they have caused. Elam and Media are the ancient names of the towns of Persia, modern-day Iran. The Elamites and the Medes joined the Persian army to defeat Babylon, the powerful dominant empire at that time whose titular king was Nabonidus. After the fall of Babylon, a long period of Semitic rule ended, being replaced by the first world power of Aryan, Japhetic descent. Additionally, the land of Judah, like Syria and Phoenicia, came under Medo-Persian rule. A very important detail must be considered. Although Daniel was taken into exile by the Babylonians, his ministry continued even after the fall of this empire and extended until the time of the Persians. His visions also projected into the future. It shows a stable government but where Jews could still face certain risks. The Persian Empire had a great impact on the Jews and biblical history. After the conquest of Babylon and the destruction of the temple in the year 586 before Christ, Cyrus allowed the Jews to return to Judah and rebuild the temple. Although the work began, it was not completed until the reign of Darius I with the leadership of Zerubbabel and the high priest Joshua. Let's read the book of Ezra chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. In the first year of Cyrus king of Persia that the word of the Lord might be fulfilled by the mouth of Jeremiah, the Lord awakened the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia, which he caused to be proclaimed by word of mouth and also in writing throughout his kingdom, saying, Thus says Cyrus king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has commanded me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Despite local opposition, Darius supported the rebuilding of the temple, which was completed in his sixth year of reign. Ezra and Nehemiah were official representatives of the Persian government, with Ezra teaching and appointing judges, 
and Nehemiah possibly being the first governor of the province of Yehud or Judah. Both had official support for the reconstruction of the walls of Jerusalem. Importantly, Jews also experienced hardship during Persian rule. The story of Esther is the story of how God rescued his people during the reign of the Persian emperor Ahasuerus, also known as Xerxes I. Haman was appointed prime minister of the Persian king Ahasuerus and became an implacable enemy of the Jews. He planned a plot to exterminate them and even had a gallows built to hang Mordecai, who refused to bow down to him. However, thanks to God's intervention using Esther, his plan was discovered and he ended up being hanged on the same gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Now, the Persian Empire is important for the history and development of civilization. It had significant effects on religion, law, politics, and economics. Cyrus died in the year 530 before Christ. However, the Persian Empire continued to grow. Cambyses II, son of Cyrus, conquered Egypt in the year 525 before Christ. After Cambyses, Darius first expanded the empire eastward to the Indus and also attempted to conquer or control the Greeks. They defeated Darius at the Battle of Marathon in the year 490 before Christ. The maximum extension of the empire reached here. Later emperors did little or nothing to expand it. They even had difficulty keeping such an extensive empire together. Finally, Darius III, the last king of Persia, from whom power was taken by Alexander the Great, in May of the year 334 before Christ. Alexander the Great began the conquest of the Persian Empire. After his victory in the Battle of Granicus, Alexander advanced through Asia Minor and conquered its most important cities. The capital of Persepolis finally fell in the year 330 before Christ. Now, after conquering the territory that extended from Egypt to the Indus River, Alexander adopted Eastern customs and settled in Babylon. However, his vast empire quickly divided after his sudden death. In the year 323 before Christ, at 32 years of age, his successors, known as Diadokos, divided up his territories. The largest part, which included the entire Persian Empire except Egypt, went to Seleucus I Nicator. The Seleucid Macedonians ruled in a period of great weakness, both internally and externally, being a Hellenistic dynasty in which strong Greek influence was noticeable. Now, in the year 247 before Christ, until the year 224 after Christ, the Parthian Empire was established by Arsaces of the Arsacid dynasty after defeating the Seleucids. They dominated Mesopotamia and the east of the Arabian Peninsula. Their main enemy was the Roman Empire, but neither managed to annex the other's territory. There were contacts with the Chinese Empire and the Kushan Empire of ancient India. An agreement was established with Rome to make the Euphrates River the definitive border. The Parthian Empire lasted five centuries and fell in the year 224 after Christ. From the years 224 after Christ to the year 651, the Sassanid Empire was a period of constant war with the Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire at the end of the 6th century. Despite 400 years of conflict, neither of the two powers achieved a significant advance over the other. In the year 226, a nationalist revolt arose in Persia with the aim of returning Iran to the glory of the Achaemenids. The Sassanids came to power thanks to Ardikar I, who defeated the last Arsacid king, Artabanus IV. During this period, the Roman-Sasanian Wars stand out, in which Persia and Rome were in constant conflict. The Sasanian era is considered one of the most important and influential periods in Iranian history. It achieved great cultural achievements, and was the last great Iranian empire before the Islamic conquest of Persia. Its cultural influence spread throughout Western Europe, Africa, China, and India, and it played a fundamental role in the formation of European and Asian medieval art. The most notable monarchs of this period were Khosrau I and Khosrau II, both from the 6th century. At its peak, the Sassanid Empire encompassed territories such as Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, and Palestine, with vassals in Arabia. In the east, the Roman Empire persisted as the Byzantine Empire, continuing the fight against Persia. Now, let's look at the time of the Middle Ages from the years 651 to 1501 after Christ. 
During the Iranian Middle Ages, the Arabs conquered Iran in the 6th century, but allowed the practice of ancient religions in the territory. However, non-Muslims had restrictions and had to pay more taxes. Persia became a refuge for different trends within Islam that opposed the caliphs of Damascus. Maritime trade developed in southern cities such as Siraf and Hormuz. There were revolts against the caliphs of Damascus, and the Abbasids took power and moved the caliphate to Baghdad. The caliphs became increasingly dependent on their Persian and Turkish military leaders. Independent kingdoms emerged in Persia and Khorasan. Various dynasties ruled in Persia, such as the Safarids, Samanids, Buyids, and Seljuks. Genghis Khan's Mongols conquered Persia, and the Khanate of Persia became vassals of the Great Khan of Peking. The Timurids ruled until the 16th century. In the years 1370 to 1507 after Christ, the Timurid Empire was established by Timur an Iranified Turco-Mongol conqueror who invaded Iran in 1381 and conquered most of the country. Although his regime was characterized by tyranny and bloodshed, he also promoted the inclusion of Iranians in administrative functions and the development of architecture and the arts. The Timurids maintained control over Iran until 1452 when they were defeated by the Kara Koyunlu. The latter were conquered by the Ak Koyunlu in 1468, who ruled until 1551 when they were defeated by the Safavids. During the Timurid era, the Sufi poet Hafez of Shiraz gained popularity, and his work was imitated by other Persian poets. The Kara Koyunlu and the Ak Koyunlu were Turkmen tribal federations that ruled parts of Iran and its surroundings, but eventually disappeared due to internal strife and conflicts with other dynasties. In the years 1736 to 1796, an Afsarid dynasty emerged and was established by Nader Shah in 1736 after overthrowing Tahmasp II. Nader Shah conquered Kandahar and then invaded India, massacring the population of Delhi and taking great loot. He also conquered Transoxiana and the southern bank of the Oxus. However, after the assassination of Nader Shah in 1747, the empire collapsed and a civil war for the throne began. Several independent states were established, including the Afghan Kingdom and the Zand Dynasty. Other Iranian territories were separated into Khanatis. In the contemporary age in the years 1796 to 1979 after Christ, the Qajar Dynasty ruled Iran from 1796 to 1925, being members of the Qajar tribe. During his rule, Iran lost territories to the Ottoman Empire and the influences of Russia and Great Britain. The Iranian economy suffered due to foreign presence and a famine in 1870 to 1871. The Iranian Constitutional Revolution in the late 19th and early 20th centuries established a constitutional monarchy. The discovery of oil in 1908 revived British interest in Persia, which was contested by Russia and Britain in the Great Game. During World War I, Persia was occupied by several powers, but finally in 1925, a new dynasty was established in the country. Now, in the years 1501 to 1796 after Christ, the modern age, the Safavid dynasty marked the 16th century as that of Iranian independence. Its founder, Ismail I, began his campaign in Azerbaijan in 1500 as leader of the Safaviyya, a militant imami religious order, and managed to reunify all of Iran in 1509. His family had its roots in the Sufi religious orders of the mountains of Azerbaijan, establishing their state around the sanctuary of Ardabil, near the Caspian Sea. The Safavids consolidated the preeminence of Shiism in Iran, highlighting the reign of Abbas the Great in the years 1586 to 1629. Iran's main rival was the Ottoman Empire, which in 1514 won an important victory at the Battle of Caldiran, occupying the capital of Tabriz and controlling eastern Anatolia and northern Iraq. Conflicts over control of the Caucasus and Iraq continued until 1639, when the Treaty of Zuhab was signed, ceding most of the western territories to the Ottoman Empire. Although the Safavids were not the first Shia rulers in Iran, they played a crucial role in establishing Shi'ism as the official religion throughout the country. 
Ismail first brought in Twelver religious leaders and granted them land and money in exchange for loyalty, allowing the Shia ulema to increase their power during the Safavid and Qajar period, exercising an independent role or in collaboration with the government. The Islamic Revolution in Iran began in January 1978 with protests against the Shah, spreading rapidly and being promoted by Khomeini from his exile in September of that year. The Shah fled Iran in January 1979, and the Ayatollah returned from Paris in February, establishing an Islamic Republic in April following a referendum. Relations with the United States became hostile after Iranian students captured American embassy staff, accusing them of espionage. As a result, the United States allowed a coup in Iraq to counter the Iranian regime. The war between Iran and Iraq broke out in 1980 and ended in 1988. Now, today after Khomeini's death in 1989, Ali Khamenei became the head of state of Iran. The head of the government is decided through elections every four years, in which a reformist sector led by Mohammad Jatami and another conservative sector face each other. On July 18, 1994 in Buenos Aires, the AMEA attack took place, in which Iran was accused of being responsible for the massacre at the Jewish institution. In the 21st century, the United States took action against the two countries that geographically surround Iran. Afghanistan to the east and Iraq to the west. After the attacks of September 11, 2001, Iran collaborated with the United States in the war in Afghanistan. In his State of the Union address on January 29, 2002, United States President George Bush included Iran in the so-called Axis of Evil, arguing that his regime sought weapons of mass destruction and exported terror, while an unelected group repressed the Iranian people's desire for freedom. Because of this, international restrictions have been imposed on the Iranian nuclear program, which has been developed against the recommendations of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Now, Iran is a staunch enemy of Israel. The Israeli government and defense forces are very concerned about the growing influence of the Shiite axis led by Tehran in key countries in the region such as Iraq, Iran, Syria, and Lebanon. Since the Islamic Revolution of 1979, Iran has become Israel's main enemy. The country constantly denounces the threat posed by Iran, citing its nuclear program, despite the agreement with world powers that it continues to criticize, its Persian ballistics industry, his statements about the destruction of Israel, and his support for groups like Hezbollah in Lebanon and Hamas in Gaza. Since the fall of Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the Islamic Republic of Iran has become a declared enemy of Israel and has provided support to the Palestinian resistance to this day. During the period between 2005 and 2011, Iran was one of the main financiers and suppliers of Hamas. According to Israeli estimates, Hamas brigades have a core of several hundred members who received military training, including training in Iran and Syria, before the Syrian civil war. However, starting in 2011, Hamas distanced itself from the Syrian government, and many of its members left Syria. Since 2012, Hamas has stopped receiving support from Iran due to its support for the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria. Despite this, in a speech in 2014, the spokesman for Hamas's Qassam brigades thanked Iran for its financial and weapons aid. Following the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in early 2014, Palestinian Islamic Jihad has seen its power increase with financial backing from Iran and is believed to also receive support from Syria. Following the unilateral declaration by the United States recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, Iran has reiterated its support against the Jewish state. Ismail Hani, deputy head of the Hamas Palestinian resistance movement leadership, expressed his deep gratitude for Iran's unconditional and constant support for the Palestinian people. Dear listeners, as we have observed in recent days after Israel's defense against Hamas attacks in Gaza, Iran has once again attacked Israel. The question is, when will this end? Now let's look at the future of Iran according to biblical prophecy. Biblical prophecy and the invasion of Israel by Iran. The current situation between Israel and Iran is laying the groundwork for the future battle that Ezekiel predicted more than 2,600 years ago. According to biblical prophecy, Iran will be part of a surprise attack in the Gog and Magog invasion. 
We are going to read chapter 38 of the book of the prophet Ezekiel, verses 1 through 6. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog in the land of Magog, the sovereign prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, sovereign prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will break you and put hooks in your jaws. And I will bring out you and all your army, horses and horsemen, fully equipped, a great multitude with bucklers and shields, all of them having swords. Persia Cush and put with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his troops, the house of Tagarma of the northern borders and all his troops, many towns with you. According to verse 5, Gog's allies are Persia, which is currently known as Iran. In the future, a Russian Islamic invasion against Israel is expected. The alliance between Russia and Muslim nations is setting the stage for this prophecy to be fulfilled. They will be destroyed by the God of Israel. For more information, you can watch the full video we have prepared on this topic. The link is in the video description. In the end, Iran will be destroyed because of its hatred of Israel which means hating the God of that people. This concludes this video and we'll see you in the next one. Blessings.